Hello, my name is Jesus Castillo, and in this video we are going to talk about Ruby constants. Okay, so what's a Ruby constant? A uh, Ruby constant is a type of Ruby variable. Okay, a type of Ruby variable. And there is a lot to talk about for constants because they don't behave like in other programming languages. Okay, they have different roles, different behavior. For example, uh, you can change the value of a constant, something that might come unexpected because it says constant. And if you look for the definition of constant, you will expect thing that does not change, right? But that's not true in Ruby, as you will see in a moment. Okay, so let me just jump to my editor and let's see some examples, okay? Do, do, do. So right now, right now you should be seeing my Atom editor. And let's look what a constant looks like. So a constant looks like this. Foo equals one. That's a constant. Why? Hold on. Why is this a constant? Because it starts, it starts with a uppercase letter. Okay. So if I do go equals two, that's also a constant. How about um, ABC equals three? That's also a constant. So the rule here is that the first letter is uppercase. The rest can be whatever. And that will be all valid constants. Okay, so now let's see some rules for constants. If I try to define a constant inside a method, the method um, two equals four. Let me delete this. Let's see what happens. Pachan, we get an error and a very cryptic error at that. It says, Dynamic constant assignment. What does that mean? Well, it just means that you are not allowed to do this. You are not allowed to create constants, to define constants inside a method. So you can access the constant like that. You can print it, but you can't define it, meaning you can't give it a value. You can do this. That's not allowed. Okay? So that's one rule for constants. Another rule is that you want to define them inside your class. Define them at the top of the class. So you can clearly see what constants are available. So let's say we have a class name ABC. And then our constants will be like foo equals one. Or let me give this another name. Class Ruby block, for example, and we name author uh, my name. Okay, so now that's a valid, a valid constant definition. How do we access this? Well, one way to do that is like this colon, colon, that's important to columns. And this will print my name. Okay. So that's one way to access it. Another way is using a method like this. So we call the author. Oops, not like that. Puts author. Now, notice that in here we didn't have to create a new instance. The class, we can access this constant directly. But for the method, we have to create an instance, which means calling the new method. So like this, new, and now we can call our method, and there we go. Okay, it prints the constant value again, as you can see. And we can have as many constants as you want. A URL, backbytes.info, 
Okay. Then you get the point. Colon, colon, URL. Okay. So that's how you access and define constants. Now let's see a typical error that you might see with constants. Let's say, let's say I try to use a constant that does not exist. For example, um, go. That's a constant. See what happens. I get this error. Uninitialize constant go. Name error. So whenever you get this kind of error, I want you to mentally translate this to a constant not found. That's a better error. Because uninitialized might confuse you and think you need to like the new or something like that. That's not the case. What Ruby's telling you here is really constant not found go. So mentally translate uninitialized constant to constant not found. So if the constant is not found, what that means is it can find it. You need to define it. For example, go equals one that will fix it. Okay. And another thing important that you need to know is that all classes are also constants. So for example, um, let me go to the bottom right there. So you have some space array. The class array is a constant. String is a constant. Hash is a constant. Why? Because the name starts with a uppercase, uppercase letter. All of these are constants. Okay? So if you are trying to use a class, it might be that you need to require it. You forgot to require it. Maybe you are using, trying to use something like a string IO. Uh, or a string scanner, or something from the standard library. Maybe you forgot to require it, and that's why you got this uninitialized constant, whatever, error. Okay? So that's a typical error message. So let me remove all of that, because right now I'm going to get exactly that error, initialized constant string scanner, because it's not required. But if I require it, thing is a steer scan, something like that scan. Uh, uh, yes, it is. That works. So you see, I added the require, no error. That's the difference. So to review, to quickly recap until now, so I, to make sure I didn't lose you. This is a constant because that's with uppercase. You must define constants outside of methods. Okay, like this. This is a good practice on top of your class so you can clearly see the constants. And to access constants, you can do it like this with the colon colon syntax or using a method. Okay. And also classes are constants. And uh, this matters because you might be by trying to use a constant while you're missing the require statement or you or maybe you misspelled it like this. Okay. And Ruby 2.3 has this very helpful thing. The, the did you mean? It tells you the misspelled the correct thing. So I miss an N. Uh, and it's a uh, did you mean string scanner with two ends. So pay attention for these typos. And yeah. So that's the review until now. Let's move forward because there is more to talk about in constants. About constants. So like I said before at the introduction of this video, um, constants have a special kind of a special behavior in Ruby. And one of these behaviors is that you can change a constant. Okay, so let me delete this. 
Okay, so let's say I have code, the code constant. I want to change it to two. In another language, this is probably not allowed. You will get like compiler error or something like that. But in Ruby, we can change it. Hold on. Not put. You can change it. As you can see, now it's two. Or I can make it so it's clear. It's two, 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 two. <laughs> so I can change it. So it's not really a constant. But, but notice this. We get this error. In fact, we get two warnings. The problem, your problem will still work, okay? But you will get this warning. Already initialized constant code and previous definition of code was here. So you get two warnings. I don't know why I can't they can consolidate them into just one, but okay. That's fine. The point is that every time you try to change the value of a warning, I mean of a constant, you will get this warning. Okay? So you don't want to change the values, even though you can. So variables, so constant is a type of right. You can do this because in Ruby code, is a constant is just a type of variable. It doesn't follow the same behavior, simply as that. Don't, don't get trapped into the thinking, oh, this is the word constant, you can change it, but you can. So something you can do, if you have like a string, for example, abc equals hello, you can make it frozen with the freeze method. So what this does, if I try to change it, like add one letter like that. And let me delete this because it's confusing us. In fact, let me delete everything for now. I will just put in another place. So now we are more clear on what's going on. So if I don't have this freeze, it just works, okay? And we don't even get the warning. Notice how I added another O, and I can do this many times. Hello! <laughs> so why this is working? Because we're changing the object itself. We're changing the string hello, but not the constant. That's why we don't get the warning. So we, if we want to prevent this for happening, we can use the freeze method. Freeze. And then your program will not allow this for changing. Notice that even if you do this, ABC can still be assigned a different string. Like, foo. You will get the warning. And now ABC is foo. It's no longer hello. So this freeze is only changing the object. It's like, think about this this way. Uh, variables, including constant, just um, don't contain, don't ha are not containers. They are not containers. Think of them as pointers. Okay? Like la labels. That's another way to think about it. Okay? So I hope this is not too confusing. I'm just trying to make the point that uh, you can change the constant values and uh, because they point to objects. They don't contain objects. So I hope that's clear enough. So let's move on into the next section. So there are a few methods that are related to constants. For example, the constants method. So let's say I, I grab this class from before. Okay. And I want to see the constants on the Ruby block class. We can do that using the constants method, like that. We see we have author and URL. Okay. And this is just uh, an array. 
as you can see there. A right of symbols at that. You don't get the constants themselves, you get symbols. Now there are other methods, these are more metaprogramming like methods, like get const and set const. So let me show you about these methods. Okay, with get const, we could do something like this. Uh, let's say we save the constants, constants, and then we can do something like this, constants dot each, or even better dot map, uh, constant, yeah, that's not a good name, let's just name it constant, okay, then we can do this, Ruby block, get const constant hold on a second sorry it's not get const it's const get okay so you can see so what is going on in here well i'm getting the constant list as symbols i say fit that into a variable then I'm mapping over this list of constant symbols, so out for a URL, and then I am asking the Ruby block class to get me the value. So const get this const get method gets you the value. Get value for constant. Requires a symbol as parameter. Since we have symbols already, remember, let me show you this again. There are the symbols. We can use this to get the values. So if you wanted to print all of the values from the constants, you could do something like that. Okay, and if I add a new constant, it will just work. So you can see. Now, can you create constants as well without using this syntax? Yes, you can. And that's what the const set, const set method is, like this, const set. So we need like abc123, let me now delete that. And now let's print the constants. Okay. And I'll see how before we don't have ABC. It's not there. And after I do const set, we have ABC. Okay. So that's the three main methods for constants. Constants, const get const set and on top of this top of this is also and const missing const missing so const missing is a lot like method missing but for constants okay so you can imagine what that looks like if you're familiar with method missing so as you can see, there is a lot of constants, as I told you. <laughs> and there is one more thing. And I want to talk a bit more about um, constant scope. Okay, so let's move on to that. So constant scope. Let me delete all of this. We can see that we can access it like this, as we have seen before. Okay. That's one way, then we can use the author method. But what's the, how we can see the actual scope? Well, there is this method called model nesting. There's a very, very uh, strange like method name, but this allows you to see the lookup path for constants. 
So let me show you right here. If I change this, I do something like this. Do, 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 Ruby Doctor New uh, Author. We can see that it shows Ruby block. Okay, so there isn't much to it. And also, one thing we can see in here is that the outside Ruby also looks outside. So if I have like ABC here, one, two, three, I can also use ABC inside. So in that sense, it's kind of of a global variable when you put outside. It actually is when you put it outside of any classes. So you need to keep that in mind and try to avoid that. Okay, because we don't want global variables because anyone can change it. Okay. So this doesn't show up inside nesting because like a default Ruby by default we look outside. Uh, we call this like the top level. Okay. So that's how Ruby looks for constants. And this modular nesting is more useful when you have nested classes. That's why it's, that's why it's called nesting. So if we have another class, inside this class like post or whatever, and we want to um, print thing. Let's see what happens now. So we will have to do this. The new print. Now notice this. Okay. Uh, we have access. We have access to author inside. And you can see that in our module not module module. Yeah. Module nesting method and uh, that's ruby block post and ruby block so it feels looks inside the class so if i had a different author there will change because it's closer and then we look in the parent class in the way well, it's not it's not a parent class sorry in the parent nesting scope, okay? So you can see, as I said, multiple times, I, I know I'm getting repeating here, is that there is a lot of constants. So you, you, you probably want to watch this video two or three times or more to make sure you sync this in because Constants are pretty important in Ruby. Okay. So I think that's all. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Please share it with your friends, with everyone that's interested in Ruby, interested in Ruby, so they can learn more and become better developers. Like this if you are on YouTube, if you are seeing this on YouTube, give me a like. Okay, so more people can see this. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for your time. See you in another video.